Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin and I'm here to answer your questions on behaviour management. Okay, so uh, today we've got a, a question from um, Kenya I. It says, what makes the biggest difference to behaviour? I, I think that's a really interesting question. So out of all the strategies which I've talked about in my book and through these videos and on my website, what do I think makes the biggest difference? I think the biggest difference has to be your relationship with the student. what, How the student views you. Now, a lot of issues uh, occur when a student does not like you. And that's going to be a big problem because when a student doesn't like you, whether they be male, female, whatever age, that's not something that's going to shift. I've had instances where students have fed that back to home and then home don't like the teacher involved and it spirals into a a bigger issue. Um, I've met with some um, parents of, of other teachers in, that in departments I've uh, led where the students have said, oh the parents sorry, have said that teacher does not like my son or daughter or whatever it is and I don't like them, they're outrageous, they're unfair and it spirals so that teacher then says to that student oh well don't behave for them or, or don't worry about it, they're in the wrong and that student then never realises that actually they should be responsible for their own behaviour. So how to tackle a student that just doesn't like you? Well, try and set an environment where they can't help but at least respect you, even if you're not their favourite teacher, that they realise that everything you've said to them is because you want them to do better. Try to avoid things like I don't like you, for instance, or anything that implies that you don't like them. Talk about their behaviour in any conversation you have to have them uh, have to have with them about it. Disting distinguish them from their behaviour. Focus on them. Focus on their interests. Focus on what makes them interesting. If they're a funny individual, occasionally sharing a laugh with them when it's appropriate in a lesson can actually be a very, very strong tool to build up a relationship with them. Give them a job to do that they can do, like hand out the books, but, but make sure you congratulate or thank them for it. They're not going to necessarily be used to teachers thanking them. Uh, I always make sure with, with the most difficult students that they get opportunities for me to say thank you and to say, oh, well done, you've done really well on this or, or whatever it is. Um, there was, uh, there's been instances where I've, I've needed favours done, I've needed to get a message across school, and with students that I you know, haven't been best behaved, but I trust enough to do that, I make sure that they're picked. And then when they come back, oh, thank you very much for that, you've sorted out me out, or you've done me a big favour there. And that gets them to think, oh, hang on, maybe this teacher's not not unfair but maybe this teacher's talking about my behaviour and most of them will know that they're not well behaved and most of them will know that that side of them exists so you talk in terms of their behaviour your behaviour this lesson however much you know you might be a nice character but your behaviour is, is not good enough this lesson we need to really deal on tackling your behaviour we need to find ways that you can behave in my lesson so that distinguishing factor is, is so critical to, to getting what I believe is the most important behavioural strategy of getting them on side. Make sure that you talk about them positively at parents' evening and to parents. I make two phone calls home for good things for every one I make for bad things. If a student has a good lesson, I'd make absolute sure that I ring home for that student, especially if I've rung home previously that they've had a bad lesson. Students respond to that, and you will notice that some, most, students' next lesson will go, oh, I heard you ring home last night, oh, thank you very much, my parents got me a McDonald's or, or whatever whatever the reward is, uh, like a new um, book or something, you know, whatever. They will thank you for it, and they will be grateful, and 
then slowly the relationship starts to build. Relationships with students take a long time with some students. Um, last year, for instance, year 11, not easy to come into a school at year 11, but it took me a long time to get those students on, on side. Um, there were, I think in my first week, I was sworn at by two different students in the same set. Uh, they really did not want to uh, have a change of teachers and, and whatever. And so to go from that to them thanking me for, you know, pushing them through their year 11s, it had took an awful long time. I think it was, I started the school in September and it was only January time, uh, December, January time, that we'd got a really good learning environment going with with the the toughest students in that set. So you you've got to just keep faith that in what you're doing, feel that yes I will get there. Um, don't with the students go overboard, and it's easy to to go overboard with praise, uh, and you know they just hand out books and you just go crazy with it. Students will see through that, and it's not always the best strategy. But acknowledging when they've done stuff right is is really important. On the flip side of that, just one quick comment I want to make is never punish them unless they're absolutely sure what you're punishing them for and you're absolutely sure what you're punishing them for. I always make sure that I have a conversation with any students I give detentions to or, or even have a go at for something. I make absolutely sure that they know exactly what they've done. If that needs to be a conversation outside uh, briefly, then I will do. Um, I On the outside issue, and some schools don't allow students outside, but if, if you're in a school that allows you to send students outside for a couple of minutes, then if I send a student outside, you go out straight away. You talk to them, you bring them back in. You don't leave them in the corridor at all, even if you're in a school that allows you to. The only exception to that is if someone has, if someone is really stressed, um, I will say to them, look, you need to go outside for a couple of minutes just to calm down. Um, and I think that's the exception um, to the rule. And that's not for behaviour and I make it clear to them, look, I'm not punishing you for this. I just think that you're, you're starting to, to get a bit stressed and I want you to just uh, have a bit of a quiet couple of minutes and come in uh, a little bit calmer. Uh, and as long as they know it's not punishment, then they're normally happy with it. But if you leave students outside, that's absolute abandoned, uh, abandonment, abandonment issues sort of surfacing in most of the students and feeling like you don't want them in there. And that's absolutely what you don't want to, them to believe. Uh, also sending them to different lessons. Yes, sometimes it's necessary and sometimes they've done a behaviour which means that they can't stay in the room. But that should be an absolute last resort. If they're not in your room and you're not involving them inside your classroom, then they're going to feel you don't want them. Uh, and as soon as they feel like that, they will hate you and they will not work for you. And it's difficult to, to bring that back. Very, very difficult to bring that back. So for me, to send a student out is a last resort. Uh, and I mean, they've got to be pretty bad before I even consider it. And as there are some schools that say, right, they've got three warnings. If they lose those three warnings, they're out. And even if the three warnings are for talking over you three times, that's it, they're out. I don't necessarily believe that that's the best way. And you've got to use your discretion. You've got to use your judgment on that. Um, I, as I said, if you've got them in your room, you can start building that relationship. If they're out of your room, that could take you, that could push you back quite a long distance into building that relationship with them. Um, there's always exceptions to the rule. There are, as I said, two odd students in, the, in my nine years teaching. However much I try and build a relationship with, they have so many other issues, uh, drugs, alcohol related um, and um, uh, criminal um, related, that, that you're never going to build that relationship with them. And as I say, you have to go through other channels, you have to go through the next step up, whether that's SLT or department heads. Right, I hope that helps. If you've got any questions about anything I've said, please message me. Uh, all of this is in written format in my ebook on Amazon, so please browse the site and have a look around. Uh, and you can go to my website. Thank you very much.